you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Yeah. What about Cal Brook? Cal Brook? Yeah. He said 157 he'll fight yeah, you. Too, 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 too. I think he's too small. Too you small? Know, too small, yeah. You know, my focus on 160 in middle division right now. Caleb Brook, our everybody just trash talk, you know. You like Hopkins? Yeah, you, well, you said what I want to talk about. Well, what's that? What's That's that? moving up to 168. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Loeffler, he said that if you guys can't get Saunders and you can't get Canelo, he likes Gil Gilberto Ramirez or even James DeGale. What do you think? You know what? I saw Gilberto fight the other night. I think it's a good fight. It's a good fight in a, in a, in a, in a place like Texas where there's a lot of Mexican fans. Um, it's a good fight. It's, it's a big good, fight in Texas, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a good fight. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? Well, it's starting to sound like the porridge is always either too hot, too cold, or too warm. Following Gennady Golovkin's knockout win over Dominic Wade, I was under the impression that if Golovkin doesn't get Billy Joe Saunders in the ring, then he has a great option at 168 a fight that Bob Arum has been pushing for for quite some time and that would be aka Mexican style Gennady Golovkin against the new Mexican champion at 168 Gilberto Ramirez the six foot two undefeated champion at super middleweight Gilberto Ramirez who looked very impressive against Arthur Abraham a couple weeks back now from talking to Bob Arum and Golovkin's promoter Tom Loeffler it seemed that both promoters were very interested in making this fight but when I listened to what Gennady Golovkin just recently said to dailynews.com it suggests that Gennady Golovkin personally may not want to fight Gilberto Ramirez Gennady Golovkin just recently said when asked about fighting Ramirez that Ramirez doesn't have a big enough name. So therefore, he's not really interested in moving up to 168 and fighting Gilberto Ramirez. Now, I just made a video right before this one telling you guys that, or I showed you guys a clip and I talked about it. Gennady Golovkin, when I personally asked him, I said, what about fighting Kell Brook? He said he'll come up to 157 to fight you we all know that he was willing to go down to 154 to fight Floyd Mayweather but when it came to Kell Brook he said the guy is too small now unlike Gilberto Ramirez Kell Brook actually has a bigger name than Ramirez but now he's not interested in Kell Brook because he says he's too small right but if the guy is big enough like Gilberto Ramirez, his name is too small. He doesn't have a big name. Now, just to go back to the Kell Brook situation for just a second, because that was the very last video that I did, I want to respond to some of the people that posted comments. Since that was the very last video that I did, some of the people in the comment section, they were saying, hey, Dante, come on. Of course he would go down, Golovkin that is, of course he would go down to 154 and fight the biggest name in boxing, which is Floyd Mayweather. And you guys are absolutely right. That makes all the sense in the world. You're gonna go down, you're gonna fight a smaller guy who's going to be the biggest or who is the biggest name and the best fighter of our era. That makes sense that you would do that. But my question is, why would you then turn around and say someone who's bigger than Floyd Mayweather it's too small for you. Golovkin is shooting himself in the foot when he says that. Once again, of course it makes sense for him to come down and fight Floyd Mayweather. But you don't have to make excuses why you won't fight bigger fighters than Floyd Mayweather that make you look like a hypocrite. And that is the bottom line. That's the bottom line. 
So Gennady Golovkin, he doesn't want to fight Gilberto Ramirez. He doesn't want to fight Kell Brook. He doesn't want to fight Edislandi Lara. And there we go with big names again. Edislandi Lara has a much bigger name than Gilberto Ramirez as well. Edislandi Lara has fought on pay-per-view and he fought against Canelo Alvarez. And he arguably beat Canelo Alvarez. The fact that you can get in a ring with an opponent that has faced Canelo Alvarez and you have an opportunity to do something to Edislani Lara that no other opponent could do to him, which is knock him out, that would obviously enhance the brand and the reputation of Gennady Golovkin. So once again, the question is, we know that Golovkin wants to unify the titles. But as I've said before, and as, as Tom Loeffler has said, you can't force these guys to get in the ring. So if Billy Joe Saunders won't get in the ring, if Danny Jacobs won't get in the ring, but Edislani Lara, Gilberto Ramirez, James DeGale, and many other fighters are willing to get in the ring. And all of these names are better fighters than any fighter that Golovkin has ever faced. Why wouldn't you fight them? Why wouldn't you fight them? I mean, let's just think about this for a second. Once again, I understand Team Golovkin, now they want to unify the belts. But if the other champions won't cooperate, who are you going to fight next? Because I believe that the Kell Brook fight, another opponent, another fighter who's much better than anyone that Golovkin has ever faced, I believe that's a 50-50 fight, guys. I believe that's a 50-50 fight. Quite frankly, if Kell Brook... Excuse me, guys. Quite frankly, I believe that if Kell Brook was a natural middleweight, he would be the favorite to win that fight against Gennady Golovkin. So once again, you have all of these opponents that are far better opponents than anyone that Golovkin has ever faced. And for whatever reason, Gennady Golovkin, he's not interested in fighting these opponents. When I found out that Kell Brook was calling him out, I was like, oh, this is a great fight. And, you know, a lot of people that I talked to, a lot of boxers and trainers I talked to, they were all saying, you know what, that's a real fight. That's a real fight. You know, it's not, they weren't really looking at it like Khan versus Canelo. When Kell Brook called out Golovkin, people were looking at that as a real fight. Why? Because you're talking about an extremely skilled fighter. And I said in my previous video that I, I believe that Kell Brook was the best welterweight in the world right now. And some of you guys said, oh, no way, man. No way Kell Brook is the best. What has he done to prove that, et cetera, et cetera. When I tell you guys I think he's the best, I'm telling you guys I personally believe that Kell Brook is the most difficult champion to dethrone. And it doesn't matter if you guys agree with that or not. The bottom line is we can all agree that Kell Brook would be a step up in competition for Gennady Golovkin at age 34. All right. Now, something else that doesn't make sense when it comes to Golovkin showing no interest in Gilberto Ramirez is when Gennady Golovkin decided to fight Marco Antonio Rubio, he said he solely, the reason why he chose Rubio as an opponent was because he was Mexican. And he loves Mexican style. He said that's why he chose Rubio. But now when he has an undefeated Mexican champion who's young, strong, in his prime, now he says, oh, that's not a big name. 
But wait a minute. Marco Antonio Rubio wasn't a big name. Adama wasn't a big name. Monroe wasn't a big name. It's not making sense, guys. It's not making sense. And listen, don't get me wrong. Even though Golovkin's promoter Tom Loeffler and Gilberto Ramirez promoter Bob Arum, even though they are very interested in making this fight, that's still no guarantee that Gilberto Ramirez wants to fight either. Like I told you guys, I interviewed him right after he beat Arthur Abraham and Gilberto Ramirez, he didn't seem excited to fight Gennady Golovkin, right? Because when you look at when, when Andre Ward was at 168, Andre Ward was aggressively pushing for a Golovkin fight. He was sending emails to HBO and Jim Lampley during the broadcast of Golovkin fights. He really wanted the Golovkin fight, right? But when it comes to Gilberto Ramirez, he's showing no type of urgency. He's just like, oh yeah, you know, I'll fight, you know, I'm ready for anyone now, right? That doesn't sound like he really wants the Golovkin fight either. But it's up to Golovkin to call him out and say, I want to fight him. And Golovkin is not doing that because Golovkin, he just made it very clear that he has no interest in Ramirez at all because he's not a big name, right? So it'll be very interesting to see if Golovkin doesn't get Billy Joe Saunders in the ring next. It will be very interesting to see if Golovkin actually gets in the ring with a guy who's quote unquote not too small and not too small of a name for Golovkin's big name. I'm telling you guys right now, the walls are closing in on Golovkin. And when I say the walls, I'm talking about the pressure. It's starting to get to the point to where even Golovkin supporters are starting to ask, when is Golovkin going to step up? It makes no sense that you call your style Mexican style but yet, you don't want to get in the ring with an undefeated Mexican champion that would clearly draw an even bigger Mexican crowd to the fight. It will be very interesting to see who Gennady Golovkin chooses next. Once again, I'll be surprised if um, Billy Joe Saunders takes the fight, especially after witnessing what we just witnessed this past weekend I'd be very surprised but I'll give him props if he takes the fight and once again that's a that's a good fight it's a good fight I mean it's still an undefeated champion I believe um, Saunders is still undefeated it's an undefeated champion it gives Golovkin an opportunity to win another belt in his division that would be a good fight but once again if Saunders doesn't take that fight, who is Golovkin going to face next? There's a lot of pressure on Golovkin right now, guys. A lot of pressure. And he just put more pressure on himself by, you know, saying that this guy is too small, this guy doesn't have a name, and, and you know, basically the opponent has to be this perfect opponent is what Golovkin is saying right now. Let's see if we get that perfect opponent next. And you notice I never even mentioned Canelo's name throughout the whole video till now. Why? Because I think it's a foregone conclusion that Canelo Alvarez is not getting in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. He damn sure ain't going to do it this year. And if he ever decides to get in the ring with Canelo, with Golovkin, excuse me, it is going to be when Golovkin looks extremely exposed. But yet at the same time, there has been times where Canelo, his pride got the best of him, and he got pressured into fighting against Edislani Lara. So who knows? It could possibly happen when it comes to Gennady Golovkin. But Golovkin is a different situation. Because with Golovkin, Canelo is 
facing a guy who is just as strong as he is, if not stronger, right? With, with Edeslani Lara, I think, you know, the situation was different. He was facing more of a boxer, not a guy who's going to come after him like Gennady Golovkin would. So let's see what happens, guys. That's all I got. I'm on to the next one. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> hi guys. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram at Janita. Wait, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> hi guys. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram at official Janita K. Let me see. You want to? Let me see it. Oh, uh, uh, look yeah. at you. Hey, they want Dante. Wanna... Okay. Hey. okay. Dante. <laughs> Two. Three. It's a brand new. It's a brand, brand new Instagram new. because she got her hat. So this is a brand new one, guys. All right, there it is. All right, there we go. Don't forget to follow me, guys. You too, Dante. <laughs> you know I will. <laughs>